praise. We give you praise. Can we thank him for yesterday, his word that came to us? We give you praise, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father. If you are expectant, this is my final session with you. Lift your hands toward heaven and give him the glory. Give him the praise. Adaba Shalama. You are the God of glory, and your glory is in this place. Your throne is set, and forever your kingdom remains. Alleluia. Alleluia. May all men fade away and forever your kingdom remain. Alleluia. Alleluia. Your throne is set and forever your kingdom remains. Alleluia. Alleluia. May all men fade away. May all men fade away. And forever your kingdom remains. Alleluia. 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 Your throne is set. Your throne is set. And forever your kingdom remains. Alleluia. Alléluia, 
from the scripture. My, my spirit leaps tonight. Let me show you a scripture why I started by singing and rejoicing. Psalm 29 and verse 9. How many of you are, are expectant tonight? Shout, I am expectant, if you are expecting. Please, Psalm 29 and verse 9. Ah, your version, I, I don't know which version this is. Psalm 29 and verse 9. Somebody, let's read together. Let's try this one and see. One, two, ready, go. The voice of the Lord. Make the heights to come and discover the forest. And in his temple, let everyone speak of his glory. Give me another verse. The New Living Translation says, The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, Everyone shouts. <laughs> Everyone shouts. Look. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. The Lord raise, let the empty ground. Let the distant shores be drawn. Cloud that big darkness around me. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of the spirit. The one whose voice is mightier than the rushing of many waters. His voice takes the pillars of Lebanon and heart. Tremble the whole earth and the presence of the God of Jacob. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord in my rest, in my fortress. My God is in with night drum. So he shall deliver me from the slaughter of power and from the noise of pestilence. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The word and day that were carried, for he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He that has clean hands and pure heart, who has not declared of his soul of the vanity, nor sworn the sinful, he shall receive a blessing from God, the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek you, O Jacob. Lift up your head, holy king. I'm at the most seek and of a higher. And begin to lift up the everlasting door. That the King of Glory, 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 
the king of glory. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? The king of glory is here. <laughs> I know it. I hear it. The king of glory is here. You know the song. Help you. Come on. All right. You are excited in your spirit. If you are designing, there is there is something. <laughs> your throne is set, and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Forever your kingdom to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you done? The way and forever your kingdom to you. Hallelujah. 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 We are true. The glory of God is in this place. Oh, <laughs> 
yesterday and I want to start teaching from there you can write this down very quickly why standing don't sit down yet the revelation of the glory of God will make you a true worshiper if you have not experienced glory you cannot worship accurately it's impossible you will be religious but you will not be deep. you will not be devoted are you ready this is not a truth give me a better truth this one is not your throne is set and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing strong. Strong. This is not a this is a feast. <laughs> are you ready? My friends, I know you are you are under the anointing. Flow now. Are you ready? Let's say this is a true. The song is Your throne is set And forever your kingdom remain Hallelujah 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 May all men fade away And forever your kingdom remains Hallelujah Hallelujah Every time the truth of the word of God is taught or sung, the Holy Ghost confirms the word. Paul the Apostle was writing to the brethren. He said, we are workers together with him. As I'm singing, as you are singing, even if you don't fall down, something is, is, is doing, are you here? 
when you say his throne is set, this is a let's say this is this is not a throne, but you understand. When you say his throne is set, according to scripture, hear me now. In Isaiah chapter 40 and Ezekiel chapter 28, the Bible says, How are that falling, O Lucifer? Stop the money. You said in your heart, you will enthrone yourself above the stars of God. You will be like the most high. And the Bible says, because iniquity was found in you, you were judged and you were cast down. I want to say something. Now listen. Uh, you now, you wait with the beat. You'll be flowing now. You wait now. I want to say something. Are you ready? See, if God, when Lucifer rebelled with many angels, and they did a luta continua against the one who sits on the throne, if God stood from his throne, then that means that he's not almighty. Are you following me here? Listen, all of Satan, the angels, demons, presidents, Nigerians, Africans, Amer Americans, those in Antarctica, Asia, Europe, the United Kingdom, wherever men are and animals are in the world all the planets and galaxies put together if we all rebel against god today god will not move an a centimeter from his throne why your throne is set and your kingdom shall always remain hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. So, I'm saying that if this God, imagine God now stood up and said, Hey, hey, what will we do? I know right there on the throne, the matter was taken care of. God does not leave where he is does not need to live where he is to be with you. <laughs> Are you here? Because his throne is set, that means that the government of God, Paul writing to Timothy, he says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Somebody say, oh sure. <laughs> hey, say, oh sure. That's why I told you. That's why I told you. When you understand or have a glimpse of the glory of God, you will be a deep worshiper. Listen, it, it is possible to be a Bible teacher and not be a worshiper. You can know a few things about the Bible, but when you worship the God of the Bible, it's different. Are you here? You can be a Christian, but your worship is, is you are in the shallow waters of Christian worship. You are still the Christian that is looking to be entertained. We say somebody's throat is set, the king of kings. You, you are still waiting for the musician to make you feel, ah, are you the one they came to worship or God? Are you learning something? That's why we say the knowledge of the glory of God will transform your sense of worship. You don't go to a meeting and the person is saying, say, yeah, say, whoa, dance, do like this. They are still whining you and you did not die yesterday. You ate rice today. They are whining you to worship. Listen, when you begin to press deeper into the glory, you find out that worship is not only by singing, it is by your decisions. That your decisions to honor God like Joseph, when Potiphar's beautiful wife was trying to harass him, he said to do this as, and be seen by my fellowship expos. No, he said to do this and sin against God. I will not do it. That means that he knows the one that sits on the throne. Joseph did not write a song, but his lifestyle was a melody to heaven. Your throne is set, and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. 
Please sit down. Let me teach. Thank you, Father. Good evening, everybody, and God bless you. Glad to have you here today. You want to flow with me in strings? Let it be very low, but flow in strings. Let it be low. But, but that's my song. That's the song for this night. Are you here? You must know the song for the season. <laughs> I'm going to be like that song. It's not my song, go, but me. I appreciate the, the song. So There's another one, but, but that one first. You think about it. Do you know that even that song you sang it is a revelation? Is that true? There's nothing in your life that is not under the government of the truth. If Satan can be taken care of by one of the angels in heaven, your situation is not really the problem. The problem is your understanding. They know not, neither do they understand. They walk on in darkness. The foundations of the earth are out of cars. So we talked about the products, the fruits, the manifestations of the knowledge of the glory yesterday. And um, I said I was going to start. So number one, like I told you already, is that the knowledge of his glory will transform your sense of worship. Give me Isaiah. I'm doing a lot of teaching from Isaiah this evening because of time. Isaiah chapter 6. As you are listening, please listen with an open heart. Are you following me, my friends? Are you here? Are you here? Yesterday was good. Today, today should be better. Are you here? Isaiah chapter 6. Read the scriptures carefully. I'm glad some of you got some of my books. That's good. The goal is so that understanding, understanding, understanding. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the... Listen, Uzziah was an earthly king that sat upon a throne in a location. But there is the Lord that sits upon a throne. That throne is not in Babylon. That throne is not in Egypt. That throne is not in Asia. It's not in Antarctica. It's not among the planet. It's in the highest of the heavens. But from the highest of the heavens, Jehovah Elohim administers his will, his counsel, his purposes. A throne symbolizes authority. A throne symbolizes power. A throne symbolizes government. The Bible says the kingdom is the Lord and he is the governor among the nations. The Bible says the, the kings of the earth said to themselves, they gather themselves together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands in sunder. Let us waste them and cut them into pieces. The Bible says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. He who sits in heaven laughs. <laughs> he who sits in heaven laughs. He who sits in heaven laughs. I sit in heaven so I laugh. <laughs> la 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. I sit in heaven so I laugh. Look at your neighbor. He who sit in heaven laugh. Who's, who's my friend? He who sit in heaven laugh. He will sit in heaven last. Ah, I sit in heaven so I laugh. Somebody, can you laugh? Can you laugh with something? Someone say, eh, eh, how can I how can I laugh when I don't feel like laughing? Did I tell you that? Did I tell you that I'm a biology lecturer? I say life, we are teaching life in the spirit. Listen, when you minister or operate from understanding, your emotions will catch up later. Revelation is superior to emotion. Even when I don't feel like it, somebody laugh now. He will sit in never laugh. He will sit in never laugh. He will sit in never laugh. I sit in never so I laugh. La 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 la. La 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 la. Your throne is set and forever your kingdom. Look at that, see that, see that. 
You are, you are you are ready you are ready Sit down. remember to stay with me and give me my story glory be to god forever you should the, the revelation of god will truly alter your sense of worship you will move from being entertained to becoming the one that entertains jehovah listen i can come down okay Abby, no. do you know that do you know that according to the bible god enjoys being entertained let me look for somebody and let, let me do experiment madam your name is mercy Bamishai. is that true are you a medical student you are a medical student um if i want to hail you now and i say you are the Magnificent CEO of World Leads. 
You are beautiful as the morning sun. You are as delightsome as... Now, she's already... I am following somebody. Now, you may say you are being carnal, but natural things give you a picture of supernatural things. There are those who say, no, 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 no. God else does not swell. And I understand what they are saying, that God else does not swell. Yes, there does not swell. But listen, nobody worships God accurately and God does not respond. If human being responds to adoration by another human being, God responds to the worship of his own children. Are you here? Every time they worship God properly in the Old Testament, God responded. Sometimes it was with fire. Sometimes it was with glory. But God must respond. Tell your neighbor, God must respond. In Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, as I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Uh -huh. Give me the next verse. I want to show you something. Who's there? Above it stood the seraphims, each one winged, with two covered the face, two covered the feet, and with two he did fly. Somebody say fly. <laughs> uh huh. That's three. Now read this one. Loud and clear. The glory of God. You live an effective Christian life. You are able to make impact because, maybe I should say this, there is a difference between the gift of the Spirit and the glory of God. The gift of the Spirit are tools for the work of ministry. The glory of God is more than a tool. The glory of God first affects you, the glory carrier, so that it also affects everything that you lay your hands upon for the kingdom. So lead your glory to the glory of God. The reason why some of us are not effective is because we like activity, but we do not understand that there is a motive behind the activity, which will be to glorify God. And when your motive is right and your engagement is accurate, you will produce the God desired result. Why am I not effective? Listen, you can be popular and not effective. Hello, sir. Ah, hello, sir. You know that it is not how long you live that counts, it is how you live that counts. When you encounter the glory of God in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, by the power of His Word, you are repented of your sins. You've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are living in his will, daily following. After a while, you will just notice that your life is beginning to make sense to you. Has it happened to anybody here? Do I have a witness here? That you just feel, ah, it's like, ah. Whether you are a fellowship expo or not, you are just seeing meaning to your life. That somebody else will wake up and say, today, I just feel like dying. My life is I'm frustrated. Yet you, you don't have money. You have no food. You are challenged. There are a lot of things that are coming at you. But you can still remember. Your throne is set. And forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From your bed, oh, there's no food. Oh. Hallelujah. Listen, even if it is Gary, you are mixing. So I'm watching mix, Gary. Do you know how to... Back in those days, you go to Iwoloko. There's a market called Iwoloko Market. Is it still there? Yeah. Then you buy tomato, shombo, tatashi. When you, there's a way you will do it. They, then you now put it in an ancient pot. You'll be boiling it. You know how? Then it will be hard. Is that true? Then you'll now be taking it to do your other things. That pot will be there for a long time. Are you here? That's what you have. But as you are worshipping God with the available resources, God will breathe on you. What will come out of your life will be greater than what people can imagine. For eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither has it entered into the figment of the imagination of any man. What God has in store. Not for those that play church. For them that love him. Ask your neighbor, are you playing church or do you love God? I like the way that sister has you. God will bless you. I'll, I'll give you a gift after the service. Ask your neighbor again. I know now, you see. <laughs> pride. Also. Now... I service, let me know now. Look at your neighbor and preach to them like an evangelist. Say, are you playing church or do you love God? What was the person? Look again to your neighbor and say, are you playing church or do you love God? What did they say? Somebody said the truth. <laughs> what? Now, let's go to the second phase so that we will pray tonight. I'm, I'm led to minister impartation tonight. Second phase of my teaching 
I want to talk about something I love to teach. The manifestations of the presence of God. <laughs> Where's that my drum set? Man? Come and give me. I, I, need, I need that my beat now. Need to sing that song one more time. You don't need to sing many songs to ascend. You just need, number one, a pure heart. Clean hands. A heart willing to worship God. When you, when you have that one, then you sing to God. Your throne is set and forever your kingdom remains. Why? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May all men say, may all men say, away and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Media, media, help me type that. Some people may not know, they are just coming. Type it. Your throne is set, and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, two times. May all men fade away, then, and forever your kingdom remains. So, and forever your kingdom remains is the same. You see that? But your throne is set, the first one. May all men fade away, the second one. Are you, are you ready now? I like it. Are you ready? Let's go. Now. Your throne is set. And forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It is scriptural to make music to God. But we must make that music with, with organization. You see that? We don't just say, God, anyhow, I'm Babe, tell what Babe. Are you following me? You sing it proper. You see that? We all sing it properly. You don't pocket and say, Your throne is said, God, no, you are made to. Are you following here? You are serious. Are you ready now? Let's start with the beat. Let the mistress first. Keep up. <laughs> Come on, are you ready? You are singing with revelation. Hey, your throne is set, and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 
Remember Psalm 29, verse 9. The people shouted, Water. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Ay, 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 Glory be to God, Hallelujah, 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 
this song. This song is Revelation. Because when we get before the Lord on that glorious day, we will know ourselves and we will worship Him. Those in unbelief, when they hear that song, they are afraid. They say, hey, that means ah, I want to die. No, it's a song of hope. If we died with him, we will be raised together with him. It's not a story, it's a reality. The life he gave is eternal. Oh, the glory of God is already here. How precious to us is your presence. How precious to us is your presence. Yahweh, Yahweh. How precious to me. Some of you already ascended. <laughs> In your presence. How precious to is your presence. Yahweh. So you reap. You shall tie your skin. 
Alright, try to sit down. Try. Sit down. Sit down. If you cannot sit down, you can maintain your posture. But I want to finish my notes. I have to finish my notes. Manifestation of the present. Okay, come. Let's talk about the manifestations of the presence of God because we have the cloud of glory. We have the cloud of glory. Right? Number one, I want to give you six manifestations of the presence of God. And as I teach it, you see the glory of God. Find the expression. Number one, the healing presence of God. The healing presence of God. Awalamo, ipunaya Jesus, oh, egualamo. Awalamo, ipunaya Jesus, oh. Wait. I see there are people that have calling to the work of ministry, but there's no clarity yet. You just flow. Number one. The healing presence. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. The healing presence of Jesus. The Bible speaks that when Jesus, the healing presence, Luke 5 17, as he began to teach, all this, the power of God was present to heal. That means that as I'm teaching you the word, even if it is not a healing meeting, because it is the presence of God. I carry the presence of Jesus. It's not everybody that can say it. To. I carry his atmosphere yeah. anywhere I enter. <laughs> Wait. The healing presence. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Did you see it there? And the power of the Lord he is Lord he is Lord Amen. okay no ah. yes hey. he is Lord every knee shall bow every knee talk about the healing presence of God we are saying that it can heal hearts that are broken wounded bruised by sin by people by friends by parents by those that you trusted what The healing power of God is already here. The healing presence is here. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes. We are healed. Reconciled with God, and then there is provision for the man of God for the healing of the body. Is part of what Jesus died for. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anybody who is sick under the sound of my voice, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I release the anointed right now. The healing power of Jesus. Be bound by sickness, you cannot die with infirmity. He carried our sorrows. Listen, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes. If you need healing in your body, I uh. Let the healing power of God reach everyone who needs healing now. Even those that are following the land. As I count one to three, let the healing power. One, two, hold up, brother. Three, are you here? Parate is coming now. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of revelation. The heal, the heal, the heal. Leave it, leave it, leave it. The power of God is upon you. Make sure your heart does. Yes, yes, Jesus. Hold him, hold him, hold him. The power of God is upon you. I said, hold him. Must have stood. Hey, Master. Help him. Only help us. Help him. The hand of God is on you. Put your hand on him. The call of God is on you. Jesus. Jesus. Wait. I see the, I see the, as I look back, I saw a light. And, and don't sing, don't sing. And I don't, the, the glory of God is on the choir. Those of you here, I, I saw the glory of God like a light. So you can receive clarity for your family. The things that are not clear, God can give you clarity. His hand can be upon you. He can put his hand upon your gifts. You see that? You must receive. You must receive. Listen. If you are healed in your body, you are healed. If you are sick in your body, you are healed. Believe it. Believe it. If you have a growth, if you have a lump, you can put your hand there. It will dissolve. The presence of God is mighty. The Bible says the voice of God is mightier than the rushes of many waters. The voice of God hears the sinners of Lebanon apart. The voice of the Lord is glorious in majesty. Oh. Number two. Number two. I see Jesus seated on the throne. You must desire the glory tonight. I see Jesus ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit changing lives again. Amen. Number two dimension of the manifestation of the presence and the glory of God. We have what we call the judgment presence. The judgment presence. That's what you see in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. It's the story of um, Ananias and Sapphira. You know, people were selling their properties, bringing to the apostles' feet. But they were trying to play smart and then there were problems. I feel a very strong anointing today. Very strong. I think there are many things that God will do. You must be ready. You must be ready. Now, as they lied, the Bible said, Peter said, but why do you lie to the Holy Ghost? I want to challenge somebody under the sound of my voice. You have been lying to the Holy Ghost, but he did not kill you. You must be careful. You are living in hypocrisy. And when they say, come to the altar to humble yourself and identify and receive grace, you say, no, no. I will receive grace in the corner of my seat. Uh, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the. There is nobody that has not made mistakes, but you must own up if you will receive the healing light of Jesus. 
Many years ago, I was preaching in the campus fellowship on this campus. And the word of knowledge came that there were people that had committed abortions. Hundred level. They ran out. But as they came out, the power of God reached them and it changed their lives. Some of them now will soon be married because the glory can change you and you will not look like your past. The blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Don't wait for judgment to come. Now, she's already, I am following somebody. Now, you may say you are being carnal, but natural things give you a picture of supernatural things. There are those who say, no, 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 no. Goddess does not swell. And I understand what they are saying, that Goddess does not swell. Yes, there does not swell. But listen, nobody worships God accurately and God does not respond. If human being responds to adoration by another human being, God responds to the worship of his own children. Are you here? Every time they worshipped God properly in the Old Testament, God responded. Sometimes it was with fire. Sometimes it was with glory. But God must respond. Tell anybody, God, God must respond. In Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Uh -huh. Give me the next verse. I want to show you something. Who's there? Above it stood the seraphims, each one went. With two covered the face, two covered the feet, and with two he did fly. Somebody say fly. <laughs> uh-huh. That's the now read this one loud and clear. And one cry to another. Holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God. Hosts the Holy. Ever living, ever present, Yahweh. Ever living, ever present, Yahweh. Ever living, ever present, Yahweh. You reign on us, Aduna. We worship you, Musa. Holy! Holy! Meaning that the revelation of the glory of the Lord to the seraphim 
affected their sense of worship. You know why seraphim will always worship all their lives, all their lives, because they were in, they were they are beings that dwell in the glory. One of the ways I know that you carry weight in the realm of the spirit is that you are a worshiper, not just a singer, because there are those that sing on behalf of God in court, but they are not worshippers. And so, no matter how much they sing, even though you, you also wish to praise God, you are just not connected. Are you here? I'm not saying you are in rebellion. You, you now say you are not the one. You know they didn't come to entertain. Are you following me here? But I'm saying that your sense of worship will just change. The seraphim were not saying, ah, program here, ah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. No, God is not a performer. He's not an entertainer. But you know what? If you worship before him accurately, it's a sign that you know something of the glory that may not be popular. Our generation believes that a popular musician is anointed of God. Even if the musician is singing evil songs. If I was a popular musician and I was to come and minister here today, it's likely this all is full. Why? We like anybody that is reigning. Are you here? But no matter how reigning a human being is, one day they would experience the law of diminishing returns. After a while, it's just being human. Even if it does not do in their lifetime, when they die, people will forget them and start looking for the new, the latest singer in town. Is that not true? But you see, the one who dwells between the cherubim and the seraphim, the angels behold the majesty of God and they say one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He now says from the glory realm, he peeped into the earth and said the earth is full of the glory of God. Now you want to ask, maybe this seraphim did not listen to news yesterday because if he checked Babylon broadcast channel, BBC of Babylon and he heard that Russia and Germany, Russia and US hey, one plane just crashed another strand of COVID-19 is coming out when that angel looked at the earth, he did not see all those things, why? the word of God is more up to date than tomorrow's newspapers he sees from the glory. He says, mm -mm, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is full of God's glory. See, when you begin to engage from the realm of glory, you don't see things as they are. You see things as they should be. Are you here? Because according to scripture, we have the promise that for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters over the sea. What is promised is superior to what is happening. Yes, your throne is set and forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like you can even look at your own life and just personalize it and, and say that it. I want to behold this issue from the realm of God's glory. Meaning from the realm of God's word and spirit. And then you find out that barrenness, one year in marriage, two years in marriage, three years in marriage, four years in marriage, no show. But from the realm of the glory, the commandment was be fruitful. And because Adam and Eve were on that course, because they were chased out of the garden, do you remember? And you know God said, cause be the ground, cause be, cause be. Do you remember cause be, cause be? But you realize that even under the cross, Adam and Eve procreated. If you are in the blessing and there's no fruit of the womb, you can insist. Are you? Uh, uh, get, uh, get, are you here? I'm saying they did not have the favor of God in court as at that time, but they were. Why? Because everything was designed to bring forth after his own kind. Then you, you are now in Christ. You say, ah, eh, I'm more alone. Anyway, life is. Tell your neighbor, not today. You can insist. So my first point, leave that one out. My first point is what? It alters your sense of worship. You move from being entertained, waiting for the latest entertainer, and you're a worshiper. That's why you can be in the church service. Somebody near you can be pressing food. Somebody else 
can be crying. And you say, hey, why, why are you watching BB Niger inside church? Is that how, how irreverent you have become? The checking super sport, who scored? Ah, Messi. Hey, oh, mommy, Messi. Yeah, but as I said, your throne is set to say, oh, Messi. It's because you don't know the glory. If the seraphim looks at you from the glory, then I don't know what they will see, but uh, <laughs> ah! Jesus taught the disciples to pray and showed us a very powerful principle. He said, Pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed. Somebody say, Hallowed. One of the challenges we have in modern day Christianity is that we do not know how to hallow the name of the Lord. We do not worship God as He should be worshipped. Listen. God cannot receive worship in your own terms. You don't decide how you worship God. He decides how you worship Him. Why? He is King. You are not King. Are you following me? You know, it's, it's your roommate. You can say, I put bones in them. If you like chopper, if you like no chopper, you cannot do that one to go. Say, God, anyhow, just manage it. His throne is set. He can't adjust his throne to, mm -mm, to accommodate you. Mm. Tell your neighbor, fall in line. Fall in line. It would affect your sense of worship. And worship affects every area of your life. Everything in your life is worship. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Whatever you do, you have to do it to the glory of God. You know what that means? If you are eating, there is a way you can eat and that you are eating. If heaven, if, if a seraph looks at you, hey, this one says, God, just have mercy on this one. The way you are living your life now shows us whether you are a worshiper or you are just a religious person who looks more at the outward and abandons the inward. Sometimes, and I'm speaking, you know, also to my friends here in Katsa, sometimes the reason why it seems as though they import God's presence and then, and some of you are on other campus fellowships too, and then, you know, when the man of God goes in court, it now looks as if uh, all of us are back to our normal share. It's because you don't know that the design of the glory was that we experience it individually, but we experience it stronger corporately. Are you here? So when we begin to allow bitterness, strife, the works of the flesh, hatred, malice, and with that same tongue, we now say, your throne is set. You just see that there is like a cacophony in the realm of the spirit. Why? You cannot live in rebellion against God and still be worshipping God acceptably. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Quickly. Okay. But beloved, wherefore having received these promises, dearly beloved, let us, let us read it together. Let us cleanse because the seraphims were the burning ones. They were the only ones. Holiness and the glory of God are connected. You cannot separate holiness from glory. Are you here? Because if, only, if glory comes and there's no holiness, uh -uh. all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness. How, sir? How, sir? And my friend, how, sir? Mirat Adonai. Reverence. Not just bowing the head, but the heart is bowed to God in surrender. Meaning, you are, you are a captive to the word of God. You have your will. My sister, what's your name, please? Huh? Bola. Just Bola. No Bolanle. Bolaji. Bolanle. Now, Miss Bolanle has her own will. Is that true? There are things she can decide. She can decide to stand up now. Is that true? And she can decide to just be there and calm and gentle like a dove. But you see, when you are a worshipper, your will is no more your own. You are now a love slave to the will of God. Meaning the will of God is your food. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That is why you will notice in the earthly days of Jesus. Did you read in the Bible where the Bible said Jesus was singing? Don't lie. Have you read? And Jesus sang this. Have you read? Now that does not mean he did not sing. Okay? But you see, the pronounced scriptures concerning the life of Jesus speaks a lot about his lifestyle. 
not just the singing. I'm saying there are many people that like Christian songs but do not like the Christian life. So, a song can come out tomorrow, like as I've sang, your throne is set now. Somebody can just say, ah, I like the melody. Your throne is set. And for they can even remove the voice and just put the beat. Say, ah, come on. I like ginger and ginger. <laughs> even me. Um, what I used to save it on my phone, it's time to confess. I called it spiritual ginger. <laughs> That's what I used to save the title of the song. You know, now ginger does not mean bad thing. Ginger, you know, ginger bread, ginger biscuit, ginger tea. But this one is ginger. You understand? Ginger. So anytime I play, ah, oh, ginger. But I'm saying that, you see, when you are a worshiper, whether you are singing, you are going on the road, you are buying things, you are interacting with people, once you are conscious that you are a worshiper, your life is releasing rhythm to heaven. Satan was called the anointed cherub that covered him. That means that the flapping of his wings, according to Isaiah, will release symphonies. But when it fell, everything changed. Are you a worshiper? Or you are, that's why sometimes in your Christianity, you will be so bored that if you are not careful, and if you don't have brethren around you, you can leave Jesus and say, I'm not serving Jesus again. How many of you have happened to don't lie? You say, I'm not serving. Don't lie. Let me see. Don't worry, I'll pray for you. Don't, oh yeah. Don't worry. You will still become an escort. Just, let me see. Let me. It's the, you see, the reason why some of us cannot be worshippers and carriers of the gloom is that we are insincere. You cannot post the presence of God with insincerity in your heart. How can they say, hold your neighbor and tell the person, I need you, you need me. But you know that that your neighbor, you just gossip about him with this one. So as that one is holding the neighbor, you think, so they're looking at it. I need you, I need you, I need your share, I need the sun. You are not a carrier of the glory like that. That's why when the spirit begins to move on people like that, what you need is not, oh, if you know what I received, is repentance. Why? Because there are many things the glory of God brings when it comes. Are you, are you, are you saying? Your throne is set. And forever your kingdom remains. Hallelujah. Let me give you another one. Number two. What will the glory do? Number two. Number one is what? Let me see if you are following. Number one is what? Altar. Sense of worship. You failed an exam. And you say, ah. Oh, if God, if, if you know, I will not. No, no, no. Ah. Exam. Alphabet, you are comparing alphabet with alpha omega. I say, hey, if it's no, 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 if it's no, no, some of you even have all A's and one B. You say, God, that's now agreement. I, I, I'm disappointed. I'm, uh. We say it's throne is set. You, your CDP is not set. Yeah, you are who can stand against the Lord and win. Number two. So I have made you realize that improper worship is dangerous. In the Old Testament, they died. In the New Testament, you may not die, but death is still working in you. Number two, the knowledge of his glory will humble you. It will humble you. Isaiah chapter 6, give me verse 5 because of time. Can we read together? Look at what Isaiah said. Want to go. Then said I, Shout it. You're saying like Americans. <laughs> Shout it like a Nigerian. Is that all right? Shout it like a Lagosian. That's too sh Shout it like an Ekitian. Where is me? Where is me? I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. That means that what Isaiah encountered did not fuel pride in him. Rather, he fueled what's up? Humility. First Peter chapter 5. When you look at verse 6 and verse 7, he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. James told us, 
You see, what God does to the humble, what God gives to the humble is grace. He gives grace to the humble. But he looks at the proud from afar off. And you know that we manifest pride in different ways. Pride has different shades. <laughs> Sometimes, listen, trying to act as if you are humble is pride. Because, are you here? Always being the one complaining among every other people in church can be the pride. Anything I say does the same pride can be always never getting satisfied by anything anybody does to you is saying, Oh, that brother did well, but there must always be but is as I'm saying it, I'm releasing the one thing. Ah, Thinking that everybody in the fellowship is talking about you is thinking about the that the pastor is preaching against you is thinking that you are the most beautiful girl in next you know you know the sisters that are not fine by my that I ever learned thinking that without you fellowship cannot continue is Thinking that <laughs> I will not say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But are you catching something now? When you begin to compare, the Bible says, and they comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Thinking that you know God more than everybody else. <laughs> Thinking you are holier than every other person. Never forgiving those that offended you, thinking that you are more like us than the beast. Prayerlessness is on seriousness during church service is thinking you are the most special one among your parents' children is it's going down. What's it? Streamline. I'm going to say, ah, yeah, no. Is that pride? That one say no, it's not pride, it's disobedience. No, is it pride? It's rebellion. Asking your neighbor question when <laughs> all right. Who is me? Listen, oil only flows through broken vessels. The reason why some of us have not experienced the glory of God in and through our lives is because the last thought of glory we experienced, we went online. Your first time of leading prayer session. Maybe one brother was tired. He just sat down. He just did like this. You see, you see that picture where that brother sat down? That's the one I want. Then you upload and say, you give glory to God. It was a great meeting. Then you now snap the one that you do like this. If the cameraman is not around to function, you are like, are we capturing moments in this service? Because this posture is not something you come around every time. Changing your voice. Because you want to impress. E <laughs> Using all the English in your small dictionary to impress people that you are intelligent. E <laughs> Collecting extra sheets when you have nothing in the air to write. E <laughs> <laughs> your throne is set. <laughs> and your kingdom shall never be raised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, help me, oh God. Hallelujah. May all ambitions fade away and your kingdom shall forever remain. Hallelujah. 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 Really humble people don't even say they are humble. Although sometimes they too can be tempted to start seeing. Anytime you are seeing yourself, you are no more seeing God. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, Lord, please take the glory. 
I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. You see that? Oluwa, Oluwa, et So you are, you are, you are. Okay, he wants to snap that posture. Let me, let me be sure so that, so that you can say it is. <laughs> Judging the preacher for posing is. All right, now. So humility. You are humble at heart. See, there are many marks of humility. For example, when you are given many out tasks, and you say me, 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 me as you come and clean poop it. I can Nothing wrong with that. You can even do your hands like that and they snap and say, eh, hey, me and go. But they say, oh God, go and wash toilet. You say, Oh, sisters, oh, me. Do you know, do you, do you, do you know I, I dwell in the realm of immortality? I flow in the celestial frequency. The rhythm of the divine walks in my vessel. When I pipe from earth, they hear it in heaven. After your poem, now, go and wash the toilet. Why? Humility is the posture of the man that we host Christ properly. You cannot represent Jesus with pride. Let his mind be you. Philippians chapter 2. Which was also in Christ. The, the, remember I taught you yesterday that Christ is the glory of God. Is that true? Let his mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Although he was God. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You know what he did? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He didn't say he was humbled. He on booty. He chose. That's how it works. We are not saying you have low self-esteem. Listen, low self-esteem is not humility. Are you following me here? Somebody says, ah, Pastor Larry, that was good preaching. You say, me, me. No, go, hey, God forbid, I never. Oh God. They say you preach good. Thank God for it. But you must remember that God gets the glory. When people praise you and celebrate you, there's nothing wrong with appreciating them because they can see value but remember the one you represent is the one that do you see that now gets the glory so low self-esteem is no humility ah no everybody walk on me i mean i'm a warm i mean nobody i mean sometimes if low self-esteem sometimes can even be idolatry because you are the center of your thinking not god hey, i'm not i'm i'm why is he you 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 when will he be god humility because peter said be closed with humility that means put it on. The flesh hates to be humble. Do you know? Flesh hates to be humble. The flesh likes to be seen. The flesh loves the spotlight. The flesh loves to be like the Pharisee, judging every other person. You know, some of you, as, as I was saying, is you can't say pride. You will all be judging me when I snap. Hey, you've been looking for a way to judge me. Being quick to judge others without getting the fact is. So say, ah, if I say, they will say, eh, hey, you are letting me. <laughs> Humility. If you want to host the glory. Let's take number three, quickly. I have two things I want to teach you tonight. Number three. Now, having transformed our sense of worship, and it has brought us humility, the next thing it leads to is cheerful obedience. Isaiah chapter six. Please look at verse six to eight. Flee one of the seraphim, took a life pole with the tongue from off the altar and touched his lips. I said, it has touched your lips. Your iniquity is poured. Your sins are taken away. And in verse 8, give me verse 8, sir, because of time. Verse 8. Hey! Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. Let's read together. Say, who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I. One of the undoings of young ministers in the last days is arrogance. We think that God should be grateful for putting us in the ministry. <laughs> Are you following me? We think that God should count it a privilege that we are called to do the work. <laughs> Cheerful obedience. Here am I. Not, listen, before it is God 
and elders in the faith that will say, Brother, what's your name? Daniel. Brother Daniel, God is calling you. God is calling you to ministry. Respond to the call of God. Don't waste your life on vanity. We see the hand of God upon your life. You may not know it now, but God is calling you. As I'm saying that in it, I'm feeling the anointing. I will not keep saying it. <laughs> but you know that in our own time, before somebody say, God is, you say, calling me, calling me. Now we are the ones calling God. Say, God, when will you call me now? Abie, if you are not calling me, I, I move. Call me. If you don't call me, I move. I don't wait for the Holy Ghost. I move the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey. There are things, but um, there are thrones, there are kingdoms. Do you know that song? Mm. But only Yeshua will reign forever, and his kingdom will be no end. Look at that obedience, obedience to the voice of the Lord, obedience to those that have oversight over you. Obedience to church authority, church leadership, LD church leadership. Anytime people say, oh, our work is not growing, and um, our fellowship is not growing, sometimes it's that disobedience has entered or rebellion has entered. By the grace of God, I had the privilege to talk to, you know, uh, Daddy Alao David, who is the founder of Kingdom Life Conference. He said, he, he called me before the meeting. And he said they started it, I think, 1994. That's about 29 years ago, the Kaksa move and all that. And, he, you know, he was sharing burdens. And I saw that, see, if you will break free from where you are to where God wants you to be, then you must be willing and obedient. There are those who may be obedient, but there, there's no cheerfulness in it. They do not serve the Lord with gladness. They are forced to do everything in the kingdom. Those ones are children. They are still in the shallow waters of Christianity. Their life may not amount to much in God's scheme of things. But if you be willing and obedient, joyfully do it. Whether you are seen or, or not, joyfully serve. Don't be among those that oppose the rules, but ignore relationships. I hope you know it's possible to be a campus esco and after you hand over, nobody wants to relate with you again. Is that true? Okay. Maybe it's not. Are you here? There is a way you can live and people want to run away from you. Why? You are busy upholding the rules. Nothing wrong with rules. But when rules begin to interfere with relationship in the body of Christ and with God's people, then one must bow to the other. I'm not wasting time calling upon the Lord. Are you wasting time? Oh, calling upon, calling upon your name. Number four. I'll give you number four quickly. Because I will soon enter my, my main buffet for tonight. <laughs> How many of you are enjoying Jesus? Shout hallelujah. Number four, quickly. What the knowledge of the glory will do to you. It will refresh your prayer life. Chadua keo, mena chadua keo. Chadua keo, mena chadua keo. Adua choko, every day we lead you down. Adua choko, every day we lead you down. Adura lele, brother, adura lele. Adura lele, sister, adura lele. Adura choko. <laughs> Glory to God. It refreshes your prayer. Remember Isaiah chapter 40. I think verse 28 downwards. He says, even the young men and the youth shall utterly faint. They'll be weary of it. He says, but those that wait upon the Lord shall watch up. Eh? Shall watch up. Renew. They shall mount up with wings as the eagles. I want to do road I want to be the leader. I want to admire. I want to share. I'll be a local DJ. 
There were men in church history that were men of prayer. They were not just men of prayer because they liked prayer. There was something they saw that swelled their communion with God. One of such men was praying Hyde, John Hyde. John Hyde prayed so much that his walls was littered with sweat from the place of prayer. John Hyde did not have a phone to snap while he was praying. He said, brother, I'm not wasting time. Ha, da, 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 da. Calling upon the Lord. <laughs> are you worshipping God or you are worshipping your camera phone? There are times when, listen, in the secret place, there's no camera there, but there is God that can see the secret and reward in the open there. Yeah. How come people are praying, but there is no open reward? Maybe it's not a secret labor. Some people, the height of their prayer is when they hold the microphone or when they are around people that can see them, like the Pharisees. He said they do it for sure and they have their reward. But when you pray, go into the secret, the place where revelation comes to men and then they can use it to engage in their generation, fulfill the will of God and still last. He says, go to the secret. When you begin to dwell in the realm of prayer secretly, what happens is that the more you stay in the place of prayer, the more you become like the Christ. If you are praying much, but you are not becoming more Christ-like, the equation of your prayer is wrong. You are building something else in prayer. You are building your prayer stamina. You are not building the God that can answer prayer. No man has the ability and the capacity in himself to hear and answer prayer. He, God will not only hear, he can answer prayers. What do you prefer? To be heard by men that cannot answer you or to be heard by the God who will hear and who will answer. Yeshua, when I call you, you will answer. Yeshua, when I seek you, I will find you. There's no name, I am no name greater than yours. I am. There's no name, name above all names, greater than yours. Prayer. You pray. Listen. Another measure, Holy Ghost, another 1,000. You have not even done 400. Pray. Pray. Eh, eh, there are times I don't feel like see, even when you don't feel like praying you pray Elijah prayed so much until he received a response from heaven he did not leave have blocks of prayer during the day maybe a short time but keep that date with God, pray and sometimes even in your busy schedule you can whisper a prayer to the one who sits upon the church and he will hear you you don't need to be in your class and while everybody are waiting for the lecture you are like and you are looking at their faces, they are like, Hey, emoji, I won't buy one. I'm like, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Your fire can be brilliant. You can be still, but you are communing. You are communing. Ah, somebody greeted you, Epelessa. Don't say, Epelema. The spirit of the prophet is subject. You can be so high, but you can relate with people. Hey, Karo, how are you doing? Sometimes God bless you or your smile. Do you know it can minister to somebody? Is it true? I'm telling you, just, ah, the person just belay like that. But there are others. There's a way you look at them. Number five. Is it number five or number six? Number five. Huh? Number what? Yeah, I'll give you number five and then I'll enter the second thing I want to teach you. The glory of God will be heavy in this place tonight. I believe it. Number five. Effective living. When you encounter the glory of God, 
you live an effective Christian life. You are able to make impact because, maybe I should say this, there is a difference between the gift of the Spirit and the glory of God. The gift of the Spirit are tools for the work of ministry. The glory of God is more than a tool. The glory of God first affects you, the glory carrier, so that it also affects everything that you lay your hands upon for the kingdom, soli deo gloria, to the glory of God. The reason why some of us are not effective is because we like activity, but we do not understand that there is a motive behind the activity, which will be to glorify God. And when your motive is right and your engagement is accurate, you will produce the God-desired result. Why am I not effective? Listen, you can't. It's mighty. The Bible says the voice of God is mightier than the rushes of many waters. The voice of God hears the sinners of Lebanon apart. The voice of the Lord is glorious in majesty. Oh. Number two. Number two. I see Jesus seated on the throne. You must desire the glory tonight. I see Jesus ascending everywhere. I see the Spirit changing lives again. Amen. Number two, dimension of the manifestation of the presence and the glory of God. We have what we call the judgment presence. The judgment presence. That's what you see in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. It's the story of um, Ananias and Sapphira. You know, people were selling their properties, bringing to the apostles' feet. But they were trying to play smart and then there were problems. I, I feel a very strong anointing today. Very strong. I think there are many things that God will do. You must be ready. You must be ready. Now, as they lied, the Bible said, Peter said, but why do you lie to the Holy Ghost? I want to challenge somebody under the sound of my voice. You have been lying to the Holy Ghost, but he did not kill you. You must be careful. You are living in hypocrisy. And when they say come to the altar to humble yourself and identify and receive grace, you say, no, no, I will receive grace in the corner of my seat. Uh, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the. There is nobody that has not made mistakes, but you must own up if you will receive the healing light of Jesus. Many years ago, I was preaching in the campus fellowship on this campus. And the word of knowledge came that there were people that had committed abortions. hundred level. They ran out. But as they came out, the power of God reached them and it changed their lives. Some of them now will soon be married because the glory can change you and you will not look like your past. The blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Don't wait for judgment to come.